Welcome to Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Specialist Kyra Pearl from 11th Corps Signal Brigade. And I am one of your other co-hosts, Specialist Garrett Dacko with 11th Corps Signal Brigade. And I am Samantha, not with the 11th Corps Signal Brigade, but with the Garrison Public Affairs Office. And this is Fort Hood's Great, Great Big, Big Podcast. Podcast. Hello, everyone. This week, we are talking with the Army Fisher House. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. My name is Candace Wallace, and I'm your Fort Hood Army Fisher House manager. Awesome. Okay, now this is going to sound really silly. Um, I thought that this was talking about an actual, like, fishing house, like, with a, <laughs> <laughs> with a lure and bait and, you know. But uh, what is the Army Fisher House? So, <clears throat> Army Fisher House is actually temporary lodging. Um, for families of active active duty service members, uh, military retirees, and veterans who are undergoing a medical treatment. So it, they don't necessarily have to be receiving treatment here at Kerdamsey. We do have other uh, medical facilities in the area. So if they are from a 50-mile radius, excuse me, if they're from outside of a 50-mile radius, they're able to stay with us and receive treatment at the local facilities. Okay, awesome. What are the benefits of using the Army Fisher House? So one of the great benefits is that there's no cost to the families. So when they come here, you know, part of our our mission is to help alleviate those lodging expenses that they would occur incur um, staying at, you know, hotels in the area. But um, we do this um, so that they're not faced with those, you know, additional expenses from... Mm. You know, that's besides, you know, having to do, you know, purchase meals and, you know, everything else that comes with, especially when it's an unexpected, you know, situation where you come in for a a medical need and sometimes you don't have what you are. Sometimes you're just not prepared. Right. So a lot of times families will come, they don't have toiletries or, you know, maybe they um, forgot to pack certain clothing items. So. Um, a lot of what uh, the community does for us is that they provide these charitable donations. And so sometimes they'll do gift cards. And so we are able to give gift cards out. So maybe like to Walmart or something that mm-hmm. they're able to go and purchase like some of those clothing items. Or we try to provide as much as we can at the house. And again, those are all from charitable donations. So toiletry items, we try to provide just basically anything that you would, you would need in your house. We try to provide for the families here. That's so amazing. I know lodging can get very expensive very quickly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. That has to be a great relief to so many families. If if a family is in need of this help, how can they reach out? So they can um, either go through their nurse case manager, who will usually do a referral form. Sometimes there's unit representatives that are also able to do referral forms, and they would just email us, and um, we'll be able to set them up as long as they're within our eligibility requirements. Um, one of those requirements is that you are outside of a 50-mile radius and not on funded orders. So um, with that, you know, we're able to look at their um, eligibility and then place them in the house if we have room. So we actually here at the Fort Hood um, have seven rooms, so we can accommodate wow. up to seven families. Aww. And so... Um, the way that the houses were designed when they were constructed was that they were located fairly close to the medical facility. So that way it would be a convenience for families to be able to just go and walk to their loved ones who are in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And so um, we're located right on the corner of Ratton Drive and Santa Fe Avenue. So we're kind of a hidden gem. We don't want to be a hidden gem. We definitely <laughs> want you guys to know that we're here and that we're a resource, um, especially if it can save you in um, lodging fees and things like that. So, And we definitely want to make sure that your your family is comfortable when you're there. So um, the way that the houses are designed is that they're, the families pr- are provided a private room and bath. Mm-hmm. And so the shared spaces would be their common areas like the living room dining area, kitchen, fully, fully equipped kitchen is mm-hmm. at that too. So, you know, we have a lot of families who love to cook. <laughs> and so everything they need is in there from pots, pans, dishes. And oh. so it's just an amazing experience. Um, you'll find that families 
will cook for the whole house. You know, wow. there'll be a family, they'll cook for the, for everybody in the house. They'll share, they'll share a meal, but it's just that, um, loving and support that you get in the environment of being in a home environment. And that's really just kind of how Zachary Fisher saw everything to be when he started these houses. It was to be kind of a, a sanctuary for families to be able to relate with one another going, undergoing a medical crisis. So. Right. That's I, I was going to say that that definitely has to help the families in that point. They have somebody that knows exactly what they're going through or very similar in that instance. And so being able to, you know, connect and maybe share a meal with another family that is experiencing that, I I think can definitely, definitely help the families through. Absolutely. So I definitely um, can share on that because I started out as a resident. So my um, awareness of Fisher House came in 2005 when my family was actually um, using Fisher House. I had a family member who was hospitalized for 10 months. And the whole time, uh, we were at Fisher House. And so if you can imagine, in Hawaii, the lodging is super expensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to stay at Fisher House the whole time during uh, our family members' um, medical journey. And so it was a huge savings on us. And it was just kind of a... uh, sanctuary for me because even being as a care being a caregiver is tough sometimes right you know there's added stress of you know making decisions for your loved one and things like that and so um being there we were just we were just super blessed with being able not to have to um come out of pocket Mm. for lodging fees and then even just the groups that come in who prepare meals at the house and Everything you need is always provided, you know, and it's just really all of the love and support that you can see through the community. So. That has to be amazing to the family member that is hospitalized as well, because having your loved ones there with you can be so detrimental, like not detrimental, <laughs> can be so uh, amazing for their recovery process. Exactly, exactly. Well, it could be detrimental. I mean, my family is definitely a hoot, so I, <laughs> I don't know if I want them nearby. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So you mentioned earlier, I believe, that um, this happens because people donate these items, the toiletries, the food, the pots and pans. Mm -hmm. So how can we help out? So um, there's actually various opportunities that people can donate. First off, um, if anyone chooses to do monetary donations, because we are a charitable organization, we do provide you with your tax receipts. Um, And then you can also you can either send that directly to us or even drop it off. Again, we're located on the uh, corner of Ratton Drive and Santa Fe Avenue. And so another way that they could donate is actually by physical donations, um, supplies such as like non-perishables or cleaning supplies. So again, anything that you would use in your house, you know, these families will probably need being in this home environment. Um, And then we also have an Amazon wish list. And so for people who like to shop online and have it, you know, sent it, sent (laughs) to us directly, exactly, you know, we could provide you with that link as well. And then we do have another wish list that's a hard copy that you could, you could pick up from us or I could have emailed to you. And, you know, again, it just, it's pretty much all of the items that you would need in in your house. So like the laundering supplies, those are, all of that's donated, cleaning supplies, those are all donated um, even coffee, you know, cause coffee is life, right? Everyone needs Amen. coffee, you know? Amen. So, <laughs> so we have, we definitely have a fully stocked coffee bar with, you know, plenty of options. And so that makes a lot of families happy, especially can you imagine getting up, you know, before the break of dawn and, yeah. you know, starting your day. So that's, that's a huge thing for families. Sometimes it's just having that simple coffee bar, you know, it's fully stocked. So, um, another good way for our donations too. Um, it, which is actually going on right now is CFC. So, you know, federal employees and, and retirees are able to just go on to CFC. Oh, sorry, give CFC.org and uh, input our number, which is uh, 34516. So if you go on there and put in that number, it, it should bring up uh, the Fort Hood Fisher House. And then you'll be able to just donate through that way. And then probably the, the best part of donating is time. And so we're definitely accepting, you know, volunteers because there's a variety of things that we definitely need um, help with at the house. So we are a staff of two. 
<laughs> so if you can imagine, you know, there's a there's things in the community that we'd like to have, you know, volunteers um, be involved with, and then also just helping with like housekeeping duties, you know, because seven rooms, and sometimes if we're full, we'll need you know help flipping those rooms and getting them ready for the incoming families. Mm-hmm. So those are probably some of the best ways that we can you know accept donations or if anybody's interested. So. Awesome. Uh, how can someone get in contact with you if they're interested in volunteering or um, donating? So um, they can actually reach out to me directly th- uh, through email or they can contact me. Uh, my number is 254-535-4563. Um, another great way to get in touch with us is also through the ACS Volunteer Management Information System. So if they put an application in there um, to become a volunteer, I frequently go in there, and so I'll accept applications through there as well. What was that number again, ma'am? That number is 254-535-4563. Fantastic. Thank you. And was there anything else that you wanted to make sure you mentioned that we didn't get to already? Um, I would just, if we could, just... um, let people know to just watch out for our page. Um, we did actually get an um, opportunity to um, do an event with Bubba's on the 12th of December. And so they're doing a fundraising event for us. Um, I'll have more details, you know, posting on the, the uh, Fisher House um, Facebook. And so basically, you know, if they're able to um, obtain a flyer from us, they'll be able to go to Bubba's and, uh, some of those proceeds will actually come to, to Fisher House. So that's just an upcoming event, and I'm sure we'll have many more coming. Um, actually, as a matter of fact, <laughs> with the holidays coming up, we're doing an adopter room at the house. And so I have a couple of companies and community supporters who are decorating uh, certain areas of the house. And it's really just to kind of create a, a seasonal an atmosphere for our families, right? Because if you can imagine... Being in a medical situation during the holidays is tough. Mm. And so nobody wants to be in a, you know. Very gloomy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like yeah. you want to, you know, you want to be able to participate in the festivities <laughs> that right. everyone is doing around the world. And so one of the things is that, you know, we have different groups who are coming in to decorate different areas of the house. And so um, right now I have everyone decorating majority of the house and the only two areas that I have left are um, the main hallway and the kitchen and so if anyone's group is interested in coming (laughs) out and signing up for those last two areas that'd be awesome but definitely we would just want to make sure that our families have that you know Christmas atmosphere and that you know that is such a great opportunity for families absolutely I agree I, I really do appreciate everything uh, y'all do for families, especially in times of need. Um, that's something very special. Um, so we wanted to thank you for coming out and sharing those opportunities with us today. So thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Absolutely. money and get special military discounted tickets to your favorite attractions like Six Flags, Schlitterbahn, SeaWorld, Disney World, and more. Stop by our Leisure Travel Services office located right here on post to get those tickets. For more information, go to our website at hood.armymwr.com. Have fun! Hey, it's Melissa here from Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions. Now is a great time to stop by and see what furry friends they have waiting for their forever home. Or, down boy, you can follow their Facebook page called Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions. The great thing about pets that come from Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions is, all right now, be good. They're practically free. Well, sometimes they're free. They just need a good mommy or daddy. So stop by Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions. Check the Facebook page of Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions. Or even call Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions at 254-287-4675 to make someone very, very happy. Let 
make your voice be heard at BOSS. What's BOSS? BOSS stands for Better Opportunities for Single Soldiers and serves the single service member community, active, guard, and reserve, as well as single parents, geographical bachelors, all U.S. military service branches, and foreign service members assigned to the installation. The BOSS program is based on quality of life, community service, and recreation and leisure. As a member of BOSS, have a voice in how you live, how you spend your leisure time, and how you support the community around you. BOSS membership and the program's available leadership and project management roles also will enhance your promotion packets. For more information about how you can become a BOSS member, visit our website at hood.armymwr.com. That was such an amazing interview. I cannot believe I did not know that that existed. <laughs> service existed. I, I'm right with you. I didn't either. I thought it was a bait shop. So <laughs> yeah, next I time I will give you that. guys more details, I guess, beforehand. I, I, or? I don't know. I kind of liked going in blind. Oh, I learned okay. a lot yeah. about it. I didn't That's know this good. was actually a nationwide yes, it yes. service. Yeah. So that was really eye opening. Yeah. So if somebody is not here or, you know, somebody is here, but you clearly don't live here, it's the, the service to you is the place to be. Right. Yeah. Right. So amazing. And then um, I know that they were talking about afterwards, yeah. you know, for the kids and the family members to help pass that time while they're waiting for their loved one to recover in the hospital. They're really in need of board games and just different things, you know, to puzzles take their mind away. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some movies, yes. games, yes. all that good stuff. I know in tragic times, movies definitely helped me. Yes. So I think they help everybody. I think so. They take your yeah. mind off of they it, do. get you out of the space that you're yeah. in and kind of free you up a little bit, yeah. at least for two to three hours. Yeah. There you so. go. On the bright side, if anyone does want more ideas for what to donate, she mentioned a lot of resources that they had even digitally. Yes. They were very advanced. <laughs> Not many <laughs> services nowadays, I feel like. They're yeah. Like transitioning into digital age. <laughs> right. So if you're like me and you love shopping on Amazon, but you don't really have the space to store everything mm, you yes. buy, mm. they do have an Amazon wish list. They do. So and you can take a tour, a virtual tour of the house. No. Yeah. Yes. So you could see where your gifts may potentially be stored at. What? Yeah. Oh, Insane. I'm buying, I'm buying them a portrait of, of someone. you? Well, <laughs> maybe not of me. I was going to say someone else, important. maybe Audie Murphy. Oh, there you me. go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's a little bit more appropriate. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right. We'll put it in the movie room, though. There you go. I'm oh, so excited yeah. that we got to learn about this, though. Like, this I is know. a it great was a episode really... to come back on. <laughs> yes. Welcome back. <laughs> yes. For those that did not know, Specialist Pearl was at BLC. Which stands for? Basic Leadership Course. Ooh, look at you. You yes. learned something while you were there. <laughs> yes. So she is uh, now looking forward to a promotion. Woohoo! Yes. Yes. So Congratulations. Excited. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be back to work. Yes. We're, we're excited. very happy to have you back. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes we are. And speaking of work, uh, everyone needs to know that uh, people are going to be using space heaters, which you're not allowed to be using here at Fort Hood. That's not allowed wow. in the workspace. And at home, make sure you're being safe with them, not having them around flammable things, unplugging them when you're not using them, keep them away from children and pets and all sorts of things. Please do not light Sparky on fire. I know yes. it's in his name, but don't do <laughs> it. Want it. No. 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 It Keep really it ha the weather really has been crazy lately though. It it's has. Been hot and cold. <laughs> I know. Yes. Which also Keep this, keep this in mind. Please also be careful uh, about getting sick with these yes. crazy weather changes. Yes. You know, you can get sick. So I know, I know it's beating a drum, beating a broken record and, and all that, but you know, wash your hands, all that good stuff. Yes. And that's tips. all I'll say about okay. it. Okay. Well, we appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> On the bright side, that cold weather, it means that it's the holiday season, and yeah. that's so exciting. Yes, Thanksgiving's right around the corner. It is. And after that, it's Christmas time. Holidays. Yes. I'm oh, so excited. Yeah. Peppermint mochas. <laughs> 
peppermint hot mine. chocolate. <laughs> if you can't tell, I love peppermint. I was going to say, are you just putting peppermint in everything? Yes, or? absolutely. Oh, you okay. have to. That's that makes fair. it Christmassy. Yeah. <laughs> peppermint milkshakes. Oh, I, I don't know if do that's a thing. love. It is. It, is. it definitely it is. is. They're very good. Oh, they're delicious. Really? Yeah. Would recommend. Okay. I got to try that. <laughs> 10 out of 10. 11 out of 10. Whoa. Yeah, we're oh. going above the bar. <laughs> All right, then. scale. <laughs> I love that. Okay, what food are you guys most looking forward to for Thanksgiving? Oh, no. Mm. Oh, there's two options. <laughs> All right. Game time decision. <laughs> Game time decision. Two minutes on the clock. That's right. I'm going with apple pie. Mm, okay. With a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Ooh, yeah. You got to warm up the pie, though. Yes, it has you to be to. warm. You yes. have to. And yes. if you can home make the pie, it's even oh, better. Yeah. Absolutely. Speaking of homemade, I recently learned how to make homemade mashed potatoes, and those are amazing. What were you doing before? Like the box powder? <laughs> oh, oh, no. The instant mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah, like you just mix it with the water oh, or yeah. chicken broth It's or so easy to make mashed potatoes. No, yeah. Just but like, mash them up. <laughs> <laughs> it used, I, it I don't know sounds why. easy. <laughs> it sounds easy, but the ma- like... For some reason, I could never get the the potatoes to cook right, where it was oh. like mashable within a couple. Oh, of, like, okay, okay. It okay. used to take me like four hours to boil them, and they would still be not like I don't know what was happening. Oh, My no. oven, something was wrong, but it works better if you bake it. Just tip. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so is that the food you're most looking forward to now? No, no, that takes way too much effort. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Well, never mind. I'm then. looking forward to mac and cheese, though. Oh, I love mac and cheese. Oh, good mac and the cheese. The classic. Yeah. Oh, you bake it. Yes. Okay. Mm. Good. Interesting. What about you, Samantha? What are you mm. most excited for? Um, I really love stuffing, but like the box stuffing or homemade stuffing because I am a vegetarian, as I revealed in the last episode. Right. Um, so yeah, stuffing that is not actually stuffed in the bird, I would not eat that. But stuffing is with some gravy on top. Oh, you got to have the gravy. Yeah. How do you make homemade stuffing? I thought they only had the box. <laughs> So basically to make homemade stuffing, you just take bread and then you either, you know, cube it up and leave it out overnight so it can kind of get a little dry or you could bake it in the oven so it kind of dries out a little bit and then you can put whatever you want in it. So people usually put up carrots and onions and celery, chop it up, saute all the vegetables and then put it all together. You join the army and suddenly learn that there are more than boxed foods. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Coming up next is uh, Samantha's cooking show (laughs) with Guy Fieri and uh, Gordon Ramsay. Amazing. Right. I actually, I would love to see a show with those two cooking Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, Oh, wow. That would be a dream. (laughs) Right. Yes. And then you get to eat it. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That would be amazing. Wow. That'd be so nice. I would love that. I can't wait for the food comas. Yeah. Those are the best part. Mm-hmm. Eat early. So this is the way my family's done it for years. And so this is how I see Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Some of you may agree. Some of you may not. Mm. But Thanksgiving dinner, quote unquote, is should occur around three or four o'clock. Mm. And so then you have time to go out to the park, run around a bit, play some football, watch some football or take a nap. Because of the food coma. And then around 6 or 7 o'clock, you wake up and you make yourself one of the most amazing leftover dinners. <laughs> I love leftovers. Do you make a... I, I feel like this is a thing. People make sandwiches with yes. all their leftovers. That's yes. their second meal. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. With, scoop more. <laughs> <laughs> just make the plate. That's fine, too. That's Nothing fine wrong too, with that. Usually, uh, King's Hawaiian rolls. Yes. Yes. Uh, you, you know, you throw on some mayonnaise, uh, the turkey. Sometimes we do ham and then a slice of cheese and you're good to go. Nice. It's I'm hungry. amazing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think we're going to have to go so I can make some food. All right. Sounds good to me. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see you guys next week. Bye. Adios. This podcast is a U.S. Army Garrison Fort Hood and Fort Hood Public Affairs production. The show's theme music is written and produced by Delicious All Stars. All our music is obtained through Filter by Song Trader. Have a question or want to share some insights with us? Email us at forthoodpao at gmail.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at USAG Fort Hood. And as always, 
be sure to leave a review and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts.